What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel Mystic Watch and today we got a brand new video. We got a hefty, hefty patch notes for you today. So we're going to be going over Estrosa and everything else that's coming out on this patch. We got plenty of stuff to go over, some controversial stuff when it comes to the banners. And yeah, let's see uh, what's going to happen. Let's go through, uh, before I start off the video, I really want to, you know, say shout out to Grand Cross Database, gcdatabase.com. It is always linked down below uh, in the description. Wonderful job translating stuff, really fast with the translations, and it's very, very nice and easy to, to go through. So big shout out to them, making my life easier, and letting me give the information to you guys in a nice and pleasant way. And before we get into that, make sure to smash the like button i hate saying that it sounds like every typical youtuber thing whatever but i'm trying to do a like goal uh if we can hit 150 you know i will force myself to upload another video within 24 hours i'm trying to keep myself motivated to global launch so i'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and you know let me know what you think of astrosa and everything down below let's get into it he does look really nice we're getting two astrosas one Ten Commandments tag, one is going to be Demon Clan Elite, which is interesting. I wonder how this is going to work. I believe both of them will be... I, w I don't want to say they're going to be on the same banner, but I think they will be. That's, that's weird, dropping two Astrosas at once. I wonder what the purpose of that is. We got a red... Let's actually take a look at his ultimate. I was looking at it before, I, I did not find this much exciting. Yeah, that, that looked like really, really boring to me, but it is what it is. So, let's take a look. Ten Commandments, Estrosa, skill one, Reverse Blade, inflict 360% of this unit's attack to a single enemy. The target will not be able to use healing skills for two turns. This move seems pretty weak. I don't think this is going to be... 360% on a level three is not that, hard, not that high, and this is not like... Okay, let, let's compare it with... Uh, I was just looking at Meliodas before. Arthur. Okay. 300. Arthur has the same move right here. Inflict 360% of this unit's attack. And uh, I can tell you, because I've used Arthur, that that move is not strong. At all. <laughs> so, unless uh, Estrosa's got really, really good stats, like base stats, penetration, etc. You know, I... That's a uh, oof. Rebellion inflicts 400% of this unit's attack as extinction damage to one enemy. Increases damage by 20% for each debuff on the target. This is pretty good. This is just like uh, it's similar to Escanor's, but reversed because Escanor. Eskinor is Amplify, right? Increases damage by 30% for each buff this unit has. Well, oh, okay, so... Estrosa does less damage, and on top of that does less damage with his debuff. Like, it's 400% and only 20% for each debuff, whereas Eskinor is 450 with 30%. Okay. Ah, uh, I don't know how I feel about this. But, to be fair, if you pair him with Red Slater... Okay. I really like this website, it makes it so easy to navigate. Red Slater, SR Slater. This move right here decreases attack related uh, skills of all enemies. Target will only be able to use attacking skills for two turns. I feel like this is incorrect for some reason. Uh, SDS GC. Okay. Where is Slater? It's alphabetical. Why can't I not find the letter S? M L. Oh, there we go. Okay, I, th this seems correct. Reduce an enemy skill attack by twenty percent and seal other skills for two turns. You've definitely seen this. If you've seen this later before, you understand what I'm saying. Slater just seals, adds like fourteen debuffs. <laughs> to the enemy, right? Use him once, and he just seals everything. And it is really, really interesting. 
if you pair him, I wonder how many debuffs this is. I have to count, but I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe it is 9 debuffs he adds. Or 8. Could be 10. <laughs> but it's a lot, a lot of debuffs, okay? So I feel like that's definitely going to be a combo you want to try out. Let, let's move on. This is something, this ultimate I did not understand by any means. So if someone understands what this means, please explain it to me. Blackout. For one turn, take a stance. Perform a preemptive attack before allies receive damage. Deal 300% of this unit's attack to the enemies and gain immunity to skill cards. Preemptive attack. This is new. Immune to ult gauge reduction effect. Attack before the enemy. So. Interesting. Okay, okay. I think I think I understand it. So, when you got your three, you know, you're versing someone, right? They got three people, you got three people. Normally, when you do your turn, like you, you select your three cards, you just do all the moves, right? But if you use, let's say they got three people, you kill one of them, right? Okay, it's their turn. Their their guy pops out from the back, you know, their fourth person, and then they do their turn. Now here. What happens is, and I could be wrong, but this is the way I'm reading it. With Blackout, Estrosa waits. He does not attack. Let's say you use your three moves, and one of them is Estrosa's move. The other two moves will happen, but Estrosa's ult will not go off. It'll wait until their turn, them to select all the moves, and then your ultimate will go off. Meaning, they can potentially waste cards and waste a turn, because that turn... You know, if you kill someone during their turn, they don't get a replacement person until it's their turn again. Keep that in mind. This is really cool. I really, really like that if it works that way. Okay, Commandment of Benevolence. When allies and enemies are under attack, decrease the attack-related stats of the attacker by 20%. Only works when he's in the battle. Okay. Composure for the strong. For each debuff on this unit, increase the attack of the unit by 10%. Okay, I think these are two pretty good, you know, commandments and passives. Let's move on to the green one. Guillotine, rush a single enemy with 500% of this unit's attack. Really, really good skill. Full counter, take a stance for two turns, taunt all enemies and counterattacks for 600% of this unit's attack. This is a really, really good stance, or uh, I should say a counter mechanic. Meliodas is the only one with a counter mechanic, and because we haven't gotten another base Meliodas uh, since launch, you know, Estros is the first person to have a counter on him since then. And green Meliodas' counter is just based off of percent missing HP. This is off of his attack, a really high amount of attack, and it taunts all enemies, which is a big thing. So, you know, I'll take it. Same exact ultimate and commandment passive is when an ally uses stance cleanse all debuffs on the ally and grant the target immunity for debuffs for debuffs for two turns which is really cool uh, i believe this is really cool if it works on himself if it does awesome passive if not it's just okay costumes yes bundles no one cares about new costume upgrade pack we're getting our new upgrades for stuff. So there's that. More stuff. These costumes are returning. Don't care. We have addition to characters to the general pool. So Bellion and the new king are going to be joining the pool in two days. Keep that in mind. PvP gear. Season 1. This only affects Challenger. So if you're in Challenger, good for you. You're amazing. But uh, they're adding seasons and they're adding different special rules for the seasons. You got increase in HP. This will last all the time. Then the special rule is, you know, whatever this says here. And it'll change week from week. Login bonus for the guild. Everything is times two. So make sure you get your UR chest if, you know, all 30 people log in. System changes and improvements. Estrosa, engravable character added. He is immediately engravable. 
keep that in mind before you uh, spend any of your stones. If he's busted, you know, hold on to them. See if he's busted, if then throw them in. Uh, the four current commandments are all getting uh, links. They are not getting any fate ultimates, just links. So that's it. Costume upgrade system. You'll be able to use the costume upgrade system to enhance the attack, defense, and HP of the costume. The costume upgrade material will be different for each part. Uh, the stats will also increase with more consumption of the... whatever. So if you increase it to max value, the costume will increase by one rank. So from SR to... I believe SR is the lowest rarity gear. So from SR to SSR to UR. All costumes can be upgraded to UR and UR costumes can only have, in have increase in stats. What does that mean? The amount of costume upgrades will be dependent on the rarity of the costume. The stats that increase with each upgrade are the same regardless of the rarity. Our rarity costume can be upgraded- oh there is R. Uh, our rarity can be upgraded to UR but will require more upgrade materials. That's fine. Obtainable with via Hell and upgrade packs. This is awesome. It gives a reason to do Hell. Okay, so Meliodas at the door will be doing this. Currently, I guess these two can only have uh, upgraded costumes, similar to how they had uh, engraving stones come out. Ah. Oh, so you can upgrade even UR gear. Interesting. This is going to be super, super defining for uh, ungear. Keep that in mind. Uh, the the CP in ungeared is gonna start going up slowly and slowly. Like right now, like peak peak ungear is like the whalest of the whales have like 115k CP in ungeared without any food. Uh, you know if you're you're really up there if you have around like 105 to 110. Like if you're in that area, you can probably hit the highest rank in ungeared. You know with some effort. So this. It's probably going to shift everything up like another 5k CP, which might not sound like a lot, but it's a very big deal. So, you know, make sure you start doing your hell raids. Changes to the character gacha lineup. Now, this is super important. Okay. Regular gacha will be usable till the 30th of April. Because this is what I was curious about. Let's, let's zoom into this a little bit. What ends up happening is, I'm just thinking like, okay, what if all, what if, what, what about all my tickets that I saved up until now? What happens to those? So it seems like these changes will, will all be here for one month. But after that, well, no, two months. After that, everything will go away. So you'll be able to use all your tickets until this date but we're gonna start getting stuff for the new new banners and what they're doing is they're splitting the banners apart part one and part two uh just think of it in seasons season two starts 10 commandments and so on uh season one is before then so everything is going to be starting is starting to get split and uh, yeah everything's going to start reflecting that like, we're getting character packs, part 1 SSR tickets, yada yada. Uh, I'm more curious about the login info. Like, we're getting two part 1 SSR tickets during the login info instead of part 2. So, why like why not get... Where, where does the part 2 tickets come from? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, this is a new player login bonus, I'm sorry. Okay. So we're looking at the daily login bonus. Two AP pots instead of SR, SSR ticket. I don't like that change. Gold. Oh, okay. Well, they're getting rid of the gold. I do like that change. Gear gotcha. So we're losing three gems here, but we're getting it back there. Okay. So we're actually getting two more gems. We're getting eight gems a week. One ticket. One race specific SR, SSR ticket. So we lose, we lose one ticket, but we're getting two more gems, and we're getting a race-specific SR SSR ticket, which seems like it can be pretty good. So as of right now, I'm kind of like mixed feelings about this. 
all the coin shop stuff are gonna change because now all the tickets are gonna get removed and replaced with the other tickets. Okay, I'm still curious as to what's gonna happen with this part two stuff. This is part one, this is part two. All right, like, so how, how are we getting tickets for this one? That's what I wanna know. We'll have a rate up system implemented each day. There will be three characters that have increased rates for summoning. I really like this though. It gives you a way to hunt for characters, which was supposedly their big thing about this. Hell raid changes. Ooh, three UR chests. Okay, I'll take that. Party leader special reward changes. This is awesome. Okay. The party leader, so this means that you should do your six. You know, if you can do six hell raids a day, you should do six hell raids a day. That's the big thing. And this is how we're going to get the, the stuff here. So, if you're joining someone's raid in hell, you will not get this. This is only for the person who is beginning the thing. Returning player missions. Okay, so stuff that doesn't affect us. I guess there's also a PvP version. Yeah, that, that doesn't seem to affect us. Okay. Changes and improvements to guild system. You can see last week's reward and the team you used, I believe. And then here, you can see your team's, your guild member's CP. I want to know... Okay. I believe... Okay. That makes sense. So this is like the total CP of your guild. And then you can see the individual CP of your team, of your guild members. And uh, yeah, I guess they just made some visual updates to here, so you can kind of see the login a little bit easier. Display change. Just some nice stuff here to make it a little bit nice and neat. And this stuff. Uh, gear stat changes improvements. I actually really like this. You can now re-roll stats automatically. So if you're hunting for like... For the most part, you're always going for the three stats, right? You're going for HP, attack, and defense. The other three stats are irrelevant unless you're going for some very specific, specific builds on only like one or two different units. So for the most part, what you can do is you can say like, I want to use an unlimited number of anvils. And I want specifically 2% HP and reroll infinitely until I get that. This is an awesome change. I really, really like this. It does not seem like you can do this for hammers, which is fine, because hammers are rarely used. Like, they are more scarcely used, I should say. But besides that, characters that have fate... Characters that have fate link characters linked will receive 1,000 more CP. Okay, so a nice little CP buff for fate links, because I know uh, half my units aren't fate linked, because the, the fate link itself is irrelevant in some metas like some units just like you don't get their ultimate you just kill them before then this is a nice little buff to that balance adjustments uh, these are stat adjustments to gear and what's really nice is they're making everything even throughout so they're buffing everything you know all weapons will be the same of the same rarity like you won't get uh, like 84 attack weapons, you'll only get 120. You won't get... Well, it's a little bit of a nerf here on uh, the outfits. But they're kind of... I really like this change. It's weird right now. I have a mix of S SSR and UR outfits on all my people, even though I have 5 plus UR outfits, because the, the stat on the defense is like... It's lower for some reason. You get 126 off of a UR outfit and 180 on some some SSR outfits. So I just use the SSR ones. But it seems like they're cleaning everything up, making everything nice and even throughout. And then Bon with no nunchuck is getting weapons, which will just be his hands. But uh, it'll be considered an actual weapon now. And um, other stuff. Yeah, that's really it. So, long video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the patch notes. It was really, really, really detailed stuff to go over. I'll be spending more time when we get more information on Estrosa. Uh, I'll definitely go back and make a full review of him. But hopefully I'll explain it enough to you guys to, to understand. 
And yeah, if you like it, please consider leaving a like. I'll appreciate it a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.